War Eagle, I'm Andy Bertram, voice of the Auburn Tigers with Auburn's brand new head football coach, Hugh Freeze. Welcome at War Eagle. Well, thank you and War Eagle to you. Describe what the last 48 hours has been like for, for you and the family. Zero sleep uh, for me, uh, but a lot of joy. A lot, a lot of uh, just having the family together, knowing that uh, this has kind of been a dream um, and now you're, you're, you're living it and walking in it. It's, uh, it's pretty surreal also. And then you, you go back and forth between this is surreal and it's awesome and oh my gosh, I have so much to do and I can't get it all done. And so I'm, I, I battle that going back and forth, but it's been an incredible welcoming from the Auburn family and um, our family's grateful. What was it like to go through the process with John Cohen leading the search? Man, he's extremely thorough and he's extremely patient and um, he takes the time to gather facts and truth and I appreciate that about him. And I enjoyed all of my conversations with him. I thought he was easy to communicate with, easy to talk to and um, uh, was fair in seeking really, man, let me get to know you. and. Um, I thought he did that beautifully with Jill and I. So did Rich and, and Lee and the team that he was using. So um, it, was, it was enjoyable. I knew he was somebody I could enjoy working for. The last six years at Liberty, how valuable has that been for you, one, as a person, mm -hmm. and two, as a head football coach? Oh, uh, as a person, you know, I, I think you grow more in the times of failure if you handle them the right way, then you probably do in the successes. I mean, the mountaintops are beautiful, but usually the fruit is grown in the, in the valleys. And I think that's kind of where I've been. And there's been a lot of growth in me uh, over the last six years from trying to be more committed and disciplined on a daily life to your faith, your family and your friends family also meaning my team and administration and, and university family and uh, learning to be a better listener. That's kind of been my goals. I'm still doing that. And, um, you know, so, and then as a football, it's been incredible. I mean, to take an FCS program that's transitioning to FBS and win at least eight games every season, undefeated in bowl games, four top 25, uh, four power five wins and um, many more great things that we've done, bowl games, undefeated, um, Malik Willis gets drafted. I mean, all of that happening that fast and that quick, it's been remarkable and I think it's a testament to the players, the administration and the staff we had there. It would seem that, that each time you've taken the role as a head coach, that school was in a transition. Mm -hmm. And I think you can say the same thing here at Auburn. What has been a key or keys for you in taking that transition and moving forward and doing it with success? Yeah, it's, it's I hope it doesn't change. I mean, if you, people don't even realize, I, I originally my first head job in college was Lambeth University. It won two games the year before we got there and we immediately won nine the first year and 12 the second year. Um, then Arkansas State um, had never had a winning season and since it had transitioned to FBS, we won 10 games there in a conference championship and then Ole Miss was really in, a, in, in the wilderness with zero SEC wins and we turned that and won seven games in year one, then eight, then nine, then 10 and, um, and, Lam and Liberty was the same way. Um, so I think something's working and I think it's the culture. And I think that really surrounds, it's, it's, I can set it, but I gotta have a staff that really buys in to drive it. And I think that's why these hires are so critical. You talked about the culture and that comes from your staff. Can you define, what, what, what does that mean to you? Um, daily, having, having, chasing the standard of our culture every single day as well as we can, but faith, attitude, mental toughness, integrity, and love, chasing those things and we've got to define what those mean to everyone, which I did in, in the press conference, and we will again, I did to the team this morning, but living out that mm -hmm. by the way, the decisions we make, the way we're working, the energy we bring, the passion, the positive energy, um, accountability, 
all of it. Uh, you know, we've got to, I've got to have a group of people in the locker room that drive that train. Um, I can be the voice in the team room. Cadillac can be the voice in the team room. But when you, you got to get it in the locker room. I got to identify who those guys are. How important is Cadillac to this equation to you? I think uh, the, the best way I could put it is invaluable. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that. I, I just, I just think in this transition time and where we are at, at, at Auburn football, and with the Auburn family, that he is a um, he's a, a catalyst for all this good right now. And I just think he's invaluable to me, and I'm glad he's partnering with me. You mentioned during the press conference that you have observed Auburn these last few weeks. What did you observe? I was really um, amazed at how hard and passionate how much fun they were having, the energy they had for a team that was three wins. And trust me, it's not easy to motivate a team with eight wins. I, learned, I, I had that trouble this year. We won a lot of big games, but I'm telling you, finishing a season is, is hard in college football. Much less if you're not, going, not bowl eligible and you only have three wins, your coach just got let go and nobody knows their future. Uh, of, of other coaches and that's hard to walk in that building every day and then perform like they performed with sure they made mistakes or whatever but man you the, the energy and fun and passion not just them but the, the fans I was I was thoroughly impressed you have the reputation of developing quarterbacks where did that start where does that come from for you I think it comes from our system. It's, uh, it's, I think I teach in a way that helps them understand the game and where the game should be played on a given play uh, post-snap, which is a little different. Not a lot of coaches give up that, feel good about giving up that control. But I, I've got to believe that I can teach it well enough for our quarterbacks to know, man, all right, coach, you talk post-snap, this safety is the insert player, this is the field I need to play on. Uh, and, and I think it's quarterback friendly as long as they can be a fundamentally accurate passer. I need help with that. Um, I, I think my gift is, is teaching them the game and making correct decisions and getting the protection set and all of that. But, uh, man, I've had some great fundamentally quarterback coaches that were really good. That's a great compliment to me. And Ole Miss had Dan Werner, who was excellent. Liberty had Ken Austin, who's brilliant and one of the best to ever do it. And, um, so it's, it was, I can't take total credit um, for the, the development. I think I'm pretty good at helping them learn the game. Your philosophy from an offensive standpoint when someone says, all right, well, what, it, what is the Hugh Freeze offense? It's multiple RPO, tempo driven offense with NFL passing concepts. That's really what it is. And I don't go as fast as I did at Ole Miss, typically. I can, but uh, I've really kind of matured into being this, uh, I want to play complimentary football. Mm -hmm. And really, the, the at Liberty, you know, probably some of our best wins. I know BYU this year, it was a huge win for us, and our defense played 58 plays. And, you know, you put a, you get the talent right in this room, and your defense only has to play that many plays, Chances are pretty good we're going to be in good shape. The importance of your relationship with your players, and I know that may sound basic. No, I think it's no. players have to come first. No. And I, in this day and time, you better work at it. There is no more of this, hey, just do what I say. Just do what I say and, uh, and don't come see me. Just do what I say and stay out of trouble and get your grades and let's hope that scoreboard works out. That don't work anymore. Okay. And uh, you've got to spend an enormous amount of time building the relationship with them and the trust with them. And then, then I think some of the results you want will come. Before you were contacted by Auburn for this job, what did you know of Auburn? Well, I've had so many friends that uh, their love for this place, whether they're an assistant coach, head coach, um, or just people that are Auburn fans that, uh, that I've run across in, whether in Memphis playing golf or, you know, obviously coaching here in the SEC and knowing how, man, gosh, this is a hard place to play. This, it, they're, they're passionate. Um, and then having a daughter go here and now live here, I think I've had 
quite the education on uh, the passion that the people have for this place. So it was, uh, and family's important, which is very important to me. And uh, I just think Auburn is an incredible fit for us. Talk about your family. Yeah, they're the rocks, mm -hmm. the rock stars, the heroes of the story. My wife's the most amazing woman. Um, just strong, grit, toughness, and grace. And three beautiful daughters are just, uh, they love their daddy, and I don't know why <laughs> they love him so much, but they do. And uh, I'm just grateful that, that God has blessed me with those in my life. They're, 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 uh, I just couldn't do it without them. And for us to be all together uh, to do this is, is, is really dang special. Your press conference was held in this building. We're in the, the new weight room of the Waltos Football Performance Center. How important is that a piece for you and this program moving forward? I just, I think the commitment level that's shown by this building, uh, by the university, this boosters and, and the administration, uh, I mean, this is a recruiting hit. And it kind of goes back to my deal, let's just come and see. And uh, I think once they feel the family culture added to the commitment that our people have made to NIL and to facilities, I mean, come on. You know, why can't we win on a recruit? Describe what a day was like in your childhood. Oh. How early were you getting up? 4.30, go okay. get the cows. I had to do the morning shift because I played ball. Okay. So you milk cows two times a day, and you know, I had to do the morning shift. And uh, some of the others would do the afternoon shift. So I had to go get the cows. Um, I remember the smell, the, <laughs> the winter mornings uh, where you have coveralls on and your boots. And, um, you know, but it taught me hard work. Then you go to class, go to school, and then you go play ball. Yeah. That's all I knew: is farming, ball. Summertime, you're on the tractor doing the row crops plus milking, because you you weren't in season then, so you got to, you got a full day then. So, a lot of hard work, but it taught me a lot. If Dad called today, could you go back and put in a day for him? Oh yeah, yeah. But they sold the cows. Thank okay. God. <laughs> I, I was uh, I was so thankful the day they sold the cows. I was a senior. And um, that was uh, that, that they sold the cows, kept all the tractors. I enjoyed the field work. I just didn't really enjoy the, the, the milking part. Okay. I look forward to working with you. Thank and you, And we're glad to have you as Auburn's football coach. Thank you so much. War Eagle. War Eagle. For Tigers head coach, Hugh Freeze, I'm Andy Burcham. War Eagle.